Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey and today we're going to be building a dashboard from scratch using Born Excel. Before we get started, if you haven't already watched our dashboard essentials video, I highly recommend you watch that first. The dashboard we'll be creating today is all about downtime exploration. This is a perfect example because it employs four of our most popular dashboard widgets and because it highlights one of the superpowers of dashboards. They enable you to visualize your data your way. Let's get started. We'll begin by creating a new empty dashboard. First, we'll pop into the Excel web interface and navigate to the All Dashboards page. We'll click on the View menu and select Create New View. Next, we'll enter the name of the dashboard, Downtime Exploration, and click Save. The view badge tells us that this is a local view, which means it's saved to your local browser storage. This is great for temporary or short-term dashboards, but we want this dashboard to have staying power. We'll make sure that we're logged in as supervisor or administrator, and we'll promote it to a shared view. This means it'll be stored in the Excel device and protected from being accidentally deleted if local storage is cleared in the browser. This also means that others can view our masterpiece. Remember, sharing is caring. The view badge now shows the updated status. Now we're gonna start building out our dashboard with downtime KPIs. The four KPI widgets we're adding show metrics that are highly related to downtime. Generally speaking, KPI widgets are large and in charge, so they naturally catch people's attention. They're well suited for the top of the page to emphasize the most important high-level information. We can then add more context and detail underneath. We'll click the layout button to switch into layout mode, which reveals our sections and related options. We'll add a heading for our first section. And then we'll add the first widget by clicking Add Widget and choosing KPI. We're going to change from the default metric OEE to downtime because we want the total amount of downtime to be the very first thing we see. Click the metric control, search for, and then select downtime. That's it, it's that simple. Now we'll add three more KPI widgets and set them to display other downtime related metrics. For our second widget, we'll again click the metric control and search for and choose down production state counts, which gives us a count of all the down events in the selected time range. KPI widget titles reflect the metric shown, but this title is fairly long and doesn't have to be. We'll title it simply down events. Next is MTBF, which stands for mean time between failures. This shows how long we're running between down events. Finally, our last KPI is MTTR, which stands for mean time to repair. It represents how quickly we get the line back up and running after it goes down. Notice that the widgets are all showing live data, not sample data. This makes it simpler to verify we're building our dashboard correctly. This section of our dashboard is finished and ready to draw people's attention. The next section of our dashboard is all about downtime reasons. We're going to add a down reason Pareto chart and a down events by reason table. The Pareto chart will provide a top level summary in a highly visual format. The table will dive deep into each underlying down event, giving us a more detailed view. Even though this is a new section, the content is still part of our downtime summary, so there's no need to add a new section heading. Instead, we'll simply choose our preferred layout, which is extra width on the left for the Pareto chart. Next, click Add Widget and choose Chart. Quick Chart controls make it super easy to generate a chart simply by using the available dropdowns to describe it. The default chart is OEE over time, and we're gonna modify it to be downtime by reason. We'll open the metric dropdown and remove OEE. Then click add metric and choose downtime. Finally, we'll click apply. 
We now have a chart showing our downtime over time, in this case by hour, but our real interest is finding out the underlying reasons for our downtime. So we'll open the first dimension dropdown and choose reason. Notice that the chart automatically changes to a Pareto because Quick Charts is smart enough to know that this is an excellent way to visualize our data set. Pareto charts show largest values first, as well as how each value contributes to the whole. However, this chart is showing reasons for all production states, and we only want down events, which means we need to add a filter. Simply click on the filter live control and then add expression. Search for and select production state. And for the value, choose down. Click apply and like magic, you've created a classic downtime Pareto. Before we start our next widget, let's retitle this chart. Now we're gonna add a down events by reason table. A table is great here because we can configure it to show three things at once. The total downtime for the entire work center, aggregated downtime by each reason, and a breakdown of each individual down event. The table and chart pair perfectly because the Pareto is visual and impactful, while the table contains all the same information, but at both a wider and more granular level. Talk about having it all. We'll add our table by clicking Add Widget and choosing Table. To modify the default table, click the row control and remove the default dimension, Shift. Next, click Add Dimension and select Work Center. We don't need to differentiate by Work Center since our data set is only for line three. But it's important to our rollup to include Work Center as a dimension. Trust me. We'll again click Add Dimension to include Reason, just like we did for our Pareto. Then we'll click Apply. Next, we're going to change our column metrics to focus more on down events. We'll click the column live control and remove the default metric, OEE, by dragging it to the trash area. Next, click Add Column, search for and select Down Production State Counts. Repeat the same process for the metric Downtime and click Apply. Like the Down Reason Pareto chart we just created, this table is showing all reasons. So we'll add the same filter production state equals down. Right now, this table has a grouping of aggregated, meaning the metrics are summarized by the selected dimensions, work center and reason. Are you ready to see the magic? Click the group live control and select hierarchical. Now we have the best of all worlds, our total downtime for our entire line, a summary for each reason, and the ability to drill into the data for each downtime event. We can also use the level control to expand and show all events at once. And remember how I told you to trust me about adding work center as a dimension? Without it, we wouldn't be able to see the total downtime for the entire work center, so it's important. One final flourish before our table is complete. Right now, our data is organized alphabetically by reason name. Instead, it would be better to sort by downtime, so the reason with the most downtime is right at the top, much like how our Pareto automatically organizes data from largest to smallest. We'll click the Sort Live control and click Add Sort Rule. We'll choose downtime as our selection. Note that the sort order is already descending, and click Apply. Boom! Perfect table to complement our Pareto chart and explore down events by reason. The next two sections of our dashboard will provide a quick way to audit your downtime data, starting with a chronogram. Chronograms are highly visual timelines of what's happening on your plant floor. They also make it super easy to spot events with missing reasons because those events show up in pink when production state data is shown. Let's create a new section with a heading of Downtime Audit. We'll add a chronogram widget, and we'll call it Production Over Time. We're going to include two chronogram strips, one that shows efficiency and another that shows production state. 
The efficiency strip is easy because it's the default metric on a new chronogram widget. This means each event is heat map colored based on efficiency. Green is good, amber not as good, and red, we don't talk about red. Actually, we hope you talk about red a lot since it highlights your greatest opportunity to improve. Efficiency provides some interesting context because it shows how well production is running during planned production time. By default, the chronogram is set to automatically change event boundaries based on the selected time range. Since right now we're viewing a single shift of data, the chronogram automatically breaks the shift into shift hour buckets. This gives us a nice overview, a highly visual upgrade to the traditional hour by hour whiteboard. We're going to click the edit live control to open up our chronogram live control tray. Next, we'll click the strip height live control and select short as we don't want to draw attention away from the strip we're about to create, and we have plenty of vertical space. We'll click the Add Strip Live Control, which will create a duplicate of the strip we're already editing. Make sure to always click on the strip you want to modify. To change our dimension, click the Event Dimension Live Control and choose Production State. This will give us a view of each production state. However, because it started as a duplicate of the previous strip, it'll be shaded to reflect efficiency. We can get more useful information by removing the heat map color. So we'll click the heat metric live control and uncheck the box to use heat map colors. Now we have additional colors that give us a clearer picture of what's happening. Green is running, red is down, amber is planned stop, and blue is not scheduled. Pink is for any down event that is missing a reason. The colors are pretty easy to remember, so we'll remove the dimension labels by clicking the Text Overlay Live Control and deselecting Show Dimension Value. We can close our control tray and hover over any event for lots and lots of additional information. We can also click on any event with a comment icon to read existing comments. And if permissions allow, we can add comments to any event. What about those pink missing reasons? It's easy to find them and fix them right here. Notice that when we correctly assign a reason, the down event immediately turns red. This isn't just for reasons either. We can change certain production states as well. We know that this down event was actually a changeover that someone forgot to scan. With a few simple clicks, we're able to properly categorize the time. Pretty cool, right? We'll finish our downtime audit by adding another section with two new tables. The first table will highlight down events with missing reasons, while the second table will show us long down events that have no comments. Even though this is a new section, we're treating the tables in Chronogram as related data, so there's no need to add a new section title. Instead, we'll choose the most favorable layout, a 50-50 split. Our next step is easy, because we're going to start by copying the table we've already created using the Duplicate Live Control. Once we've duplicated the table, we'll use the drag handle to move it down to our new section and we'll title it Down Events with Missing Reasons. This table is already filtered to show only down events, but we'll add another filter to show down events that are missing an assigned reason. Select Add Expression and configure it for Reason equals Missing Reason. Then click Apply. As you can see, any events with user assigned down reasons are filtered out. To make sure we see each down event individually, we'll use the group live control to organize the table by event. Now that we're not aggregating our data, we don't need the column for down production state counts. So we'll use the column live control to remove it. If we hover over the first column, an ellipsis will appear. This more options menu enables us to interact with reasons or comments 
just like the options we had for the chronogram. When we assign a reason, the event no longer fulfills the requirement of the filter, so it disappears, like magic. Time to create the final widget in our dashboard, a table to show down events of a certain duration that have no comments. Comments add an extra layer of context and tell a more complete story of what's happening on the plant floor, so we especially want to see them on extended down events. We'll again create a copy using the Duplicate Live control. Then we'll drag the widget to the right and give it a new title. Now let's add a special column that will show any comments linked to our events. Click the column live control and select comment. Click apply and then apply again. Finally, let's adjust the filters to accomplish three things. Remove the filter that limits our data to only missing reason events. Ensure we see only events over a certain duration and remove any events that already have comments since our goal is to show us data that needs further clarification. Click the filter live control and remove the original widgets filter, reason equals missing reason. Next, click add expression and add a metric filter for downtime greater than or equal to five minutes. You can change the five minutes to reflect your company policy. How long of a down event do you want to require an associated comment? Use that as your filter time. Finally, search for comment and select count comment for the field. The default operator is already set to is zero, so we'll simply click apply. Now you have a table of extended down events in the selected time interval that are missing comments, just as we anticipated. Once again, we can easily make corrections to the data right here on the page. And there you have it a completed downtime exploration dashboard. We'll toggle out of layout mode and also hide the live controls we use during creation. Don't forget to use the page bar to save your dashboard. And that's a wrap. In just minutes, we created a completely custom dashboard with four sections and four different widget types. Between the variety of widgets, layouts, metrics, and dimensions, dashboards offer nearly limitless options to view your data your way. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for lots more great content. And if you found this video helpful, go on over and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.